الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Today I want to speak a little bit about Tabarak and Tabarak is seeking blessings to how the different ways that a Muslim can seek blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those things which are mashroor, which are permissible and those things which are muharram, which are prohibited and I'm going to mention five various ways uh, of Tabarak and the first one is Tabarak seeking blessings uh, by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty and putting our hope and our trust in relying uh, and seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying Bismillah in the name of Allah this is a way of seeking blessings from Allah so that way so therefore when we eat or we drink we say this uh, supplication in which we seek blessings from Allah we say Bismillah in the name of Allah Bismillah Rahman Rahim in the name of Allah the most merciful the most beneficent the most merciful so we do this Tabarak when we're reading the Quran and and when we're eating and drinking and uh, at various other times uh, during our worship the second type of seeking blessings is tabarak bi sha'ra nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wuduhi so the second type which is permissible as well is seeking blessings by the hair of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his wudu and of course we won't be able to attain his wudu water uh, now but this was something that the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in that they practiced that and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allowed that and uh Authorize that in order for them to uh, receive blessings from his sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from his hair, and from his wudu water. And there's many ahadith that illustrate this point. So that's the second type of tabarak or seeking blessings that's permissible for us as Muslims. And the third type, which is one of the prohibited types, muharram. Is tabarak bi ashjar wa ahjar wa kabur wa ghairan and wa iyun o bil iyun. This type of tabarak or seeking blessings is when a person seeks blessings from trees, uh, from stones, from graves, or from caves, or from springs like certain spring waters or rivers or what have you. And they believe that by touching those items or you know drinking from those items or, or involving you know or what have you that or, or taking the dirt from it or making it like a masjid you know sitting upon it making tawaf around it for example the graves the people who go to the graves and they sit upon the graves basically almost having a picnic and supplicating and, and so forth by sitting on the graves and making that a place of worship. That this is all the prohibited type, especially if they if they seek intercession with Allah from those items. For example, from the grave, from the rivers, by saying, oh, this is the river of Prophet so-and-so, or this is the river, uh, this river Sheikh so-and-so spit in, or urinated in, or bathed in, or what have you or whether it be the graves of those saints or whether it be the trees or rocks by making seeking intercession from those things to intercede on your behalf with Allah the most uh, the most high and believing that and by taking their dirt and and, and making a, a masjid in essence on their graves that this will intercede on your behalf and that these things will give good or a lot of blessings <clears throat> and good and that they will bring about benefit in and of themselves or that they will prohibit harm then this is shirk al-akbar this is the major shirk that takes one outside of the fold of Islam and this is 
substantiated this uh, view from the hadith of Abi Waqid al Laythi radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal kharajna ma rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila hunayn wa nahnu hudatha'u a'athi bi kufr wa lil mushrikina sidratun ya'kifuna indaha wa yunutuna biha aslihatuhum aslihatuhum yuqalu laha that al anwat qala famarna bi sidratin fa qulna ya rasulullah اجعل لنا ذات الانوات كما لهم ذات الانوات فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله أكبر إنها سنن فقلتم والذي نفسي بيده كما قالت بنو إسرائيل اجعل لنا إله كما لهم آلهة قال إنكم قوم تجهلون لتركبون سنن من كان قبلكم رواه أحمد وترمذي و Tabarani fil kabir wallathluhu sahih. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which verifies first that it is impermissible to seek blessings from those things that we mentioned. Uh, Abi Waqif al Laythi radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that we left with the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to Hunain to the Battle of Hunain, and we were all new to Islam. We had just left disbelief. Many of us had were, were new Muslims. And the Mushrikeen, the pagans, they had a certain type of tree where they used to hang their weapons upon. And they used to go around this tree and they would seek blessings, blessings for their weapons. So putting their swords on the tree, seeking blessings from the tree to bless their weapons before they had battle. So they said, it was said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, and this thing, this this trees, this tree was called Vatalanwat. And so we walked by these uh, Sidr trees, and we said, "O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, make for us a Vatalanwat similar to the way they have a Vatalanwat, meaning the Mushrikeen, the pagans who they were fighting." Then the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, responded, "Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest." Uh, verily, this is a sunan. This is a a way. This is a way, a, a, an established path. You said, by the one whose hand my soul is in. I swear by the one whose hand my soul in, is in. You say, you said, similar to the way the children of Israel said to Musa. Make for us. Uh, he read the ayat. Make for us a god, just like they have gods. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Ver, uh, Verily you are an ignorant people. You are following the you will follow the ways of the people who came before you. And that was the end of the hadith. And in this hadith there's immense benefits. And we'll just name two because that's not our point here. Our point here is to show that there is the prohibition of making tabarak by other than those things mentioned, meaning the hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his wudu, or making tabarak from, uh, by the, saying Bismillah in the name of Allah during those times when it's legislated to do so. And then we're talking about the prohibited type. And this is what this hadith illustrates for us, is that it's prohibited to seek blessings from trees and rocks and stones and graves, the graves of the deceased, whether it be your dead imam, your dead uh, sheikh, regardless of what madhab he held to, that this is impermissible to, to do so. And that the Prophet wasallam after that, he mentioned the ayat, he said, where... Uh, uh, Musa والسلام, said to the children of Israel he said uh, and they said they asked him والسلام, Musa make for us a God similar to their gods meaning that they have gods make for us a God or, or, or you know we want a God or we want God similar to their gods or a God similar to their gods and then the Prophet وسلم, said Verily, 
you are ignorant because they were new to Islam. The, those companions were new to Islam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So they were ignorant of the ruling pertinent to this. They were new to Islam. They had just left shirk. And they saw that the mushrikeen were hanging their weapons and, see, you know, they were aware of this practice that they were, uh, that they would hang their weapons on this seeking uh, reward and, and blessings for their battles. So they felt, they thought that, hey, this was uh, something uh, mishroor, or this is something that was permissible and good, that we want blessings because we want to win the battle. But the Prophet ﷺ, in a very stern way, made it uh, uh, the hukum clear for them, made the ruling of that clear for them, that this is not permissible. That's that's the sunnah of those people who came before you, meaning the people who committed shirk and went astray. And so we learn from this hadith also that the ummah of Muhammad wasallam, that there would be those from amongst us who would become misguided and would seek to do those same practices by seeking blessings from trees and rocks, as, as we've seen in, the, in what is returned, that shirk that returned in the Arab Peninsula. It happened in the time of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. It happened in the time of Sheikh, Sheikh al-Islam uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahumullah ta'ala. And it's happened, uh, it still exists if you go to Egypt, if you go to Yemen, if you go to uh, pretty much any Muslim country, you will find this practice, except for in Saudi Arabia. And in Saudi Arabia, even you have people go to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, and they pray to the Prophet ﷺ, instead of doing giving salams to the Prophet and salam to Abu Bakr wa Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and, and so forth. Instead of following the way what is permissible, they turn it into impermissible. They make a, a, a journey just to go to the to to the grave. But rather, the masjid itself is where you're you're receiving the blessings, and you receive blessings by giving salams to the Prophet wasallam, but not supplicating to him, not asking him to help your your wife become pregnant, not asking him to increase your wealth, not asking him to take you to Jannah, or anything like this. No, this kind of shifa or this intercession will happen in the. Uh, uh, after the day of judgment, in the hereafter. But it does not take place now. So that's one thing we have to be very clear. And that's one of the things that this hadith illustrates for us, is that we cannot seek blessings from anything or anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned, you can make tabarak from the hair of the Prophet sallallahu Also, another important benefit of this particular hadith is the issue that although seeking the blessings uh, from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, from these these things, from rocks, from statues, from idols, or whatever, or trees, that this is something that takes you out of the fold of Islam. But this shows us a very important principle in takfir, that takfir is of two types, takfir mu'ayyan or takfir mutlaq, that there's the general takfir and is there the, the specific takfir. And the Prophet ﷺ gave them a stern admonition, but they were they had uthur bijahil. They were ignorant of the ruling, so they were excusable. So that shows us that there that other bijahil is one of the things which prohibits making takfir of someone if they have fallen into an act of kufr, an act of disbelief, that it takes them out of the fold of Islam as as a Muslim. That if you see a Muslim, they they've done an act of uh, major shirk or something, and maybe they're a new Muslim. Maybe they're unaware of this practice. They they come from a land where there isn't much knowledge. That shows us that it's for the scholars. It's for the Islamic judges and the scholars to make those rulings. And the Prophet ﷺ was the best of judges amongst mankind. ﷺ, and he was the ruler and he was the hakam and he was the qadi in that time. ﷺ. So these judgments of pronouncing takfir, of taking someone outside the fold of Islam, even if you see them doing disbelief, Reserve that to the people of knowledge. Fasal ahli dhikrin kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask the people of knowledge if uh, you don't know. And this is very important as a uh, for the knowledge to establish this principle because there are people, ahli takfir, jamata takfir, the people who uh, resemble the khawarij or the neo khawarij that, that make takfir or can call other Muslims disbelievers. Uh, for falling into the mates. So this group, they 
out of their ignorance and their zeal for the religion often, they make these pronunciations of tekfir like, like we drink water. So it's a very dangerous and serious thing. And we see the Prophet ﷺ allowed the excuse for ignorance. And that showed because as they mentioned in the beginning of the hadith, he said, That we were uh, new to the religion of Islam. We had just left disbelief. So the excuse of ignorance, even though you see someone falling into a sin or uh, falling into disbelief, an act of, of disbelief, that they perhaps they may be excused. And that's why we leave that to the scholars to make those judgments. Uh, moving on, the fourth type of tabarak. This is this is also similar to the to the one we just mentioned. This is tabarak bi ashjar, wahjar wa kubur also. But this type of, of tabarak or seeking blessings from graves and rocks and uh, trees, this is when a person believes that these things are a just one of the reasons or means to gain good or to gain blessings. Uh, but they don't believe that this will bring them necessarily, uh, that this is an act of worship or it will bring them closer to Allah. And they don't believe that these things in and of themselves they bring about benefit or they give harm other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they believe that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala brings the benefit and the harm so people who do this kind of tabarak with the rocks and the trees and the whatever and the, the graves and so forth this is the ulama say this is shirk al askar this is a means to the major shirk so it is it doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam but it is a bid'ah Ghayr mukaffara, it's the, the, the type of innovation that does not take a person out of Islam. It is something not from the religion of Islam, but it does not expel one full, full of Islam because they don't believe those things that they are uh, touching are necessarily going to give them, uh, they believe that those things uh, will bring them, are a reason for them uh, getting good, but they don't believe that those things necessarily uh are going to intercede for them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that those things bring harm or benefit in and of themselves other than Allah. They believe the harm and the benefit comes from Allah. And so it's a very uh, specific distinguishment as far as these things, but it just shows us in general to stay far away from it. That's the uh, affair of the believer is that they stay far away from any kind of uh, shady practices which have no uh, legitimacy in Islam and they have no... Um, they have no evidence for in Islam because those are in fact what we see in other faiths that use that seek blessings from rats and elephants and um, private uh, you know images of the private parts or from pictures of their whoever their holy people or uh, pictures on their stained glass windows they think they get blessings from this or they touch the garment of so and so, or they touch it. All of these are un-Islamic practices. But you see, the funny thing is, is or the sad thing, the tragic, the tragedy is, is you'll see this amongst the Muslims everywhere doing the same thing, going up to their sheikh, touching his garment, thinking they're getting blessings and reward, uh, taking his spit. Uh, I've seen where they put a sword in the stomach and he pulled it out, and the bile and the the filth. The najasa that came from outside of his stomach, he obviously messed with jinn because he was not harmed by this sword sticking in his belly. He pulled it out and there was filth and najasa on the sword and his student ate from it. And I saw this. And this is the kind of filth and un-Islamic practices and shirk that leads to all kind of, every form of evil comes from this. The last type of tabarak or seeking blessings, is tabarak, which means, for example, you receive the blessings from a person, or that so-and-so is blessed. What this means is, is for example, if you benefit from their knowledge. For example, a scholar. We benefit from the scholar's knowledge. So we say, uh, it's permissible in Arabic, you say, you call barakat of fulan, you know, barakat of sheikh fulan. You know, this is the blessings of this scholar, that you uh, sought knowledge with him, and you, uh, you you listened to his khutbah, you listened to whatever, you received blessings from that. That is uh, a way of seeking blessings without any worship of anyone except Allah. Your worship is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. 
you're studying with the ulama, you're studying your and 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 benefiting from their dawah or doing ba- dawah. These are a means of gaining benefit and gaining blessings or charity uh, that is given to the to the poor or those people who are in need or taking care of the orphans. These are all kind of blessed activities, and the person who does this has blessings. So this is the fifth type of blessing, meaning that you are not worshiping the orphans that you're giving to. You are not, uh, when you're giving the poor, you know, you are receiving blessings from this and from serving those people. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kulisu wa makru and bless the Muslims everywhere and bless us to remove ourselves from shirk and falsehood and innovation. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.